breast tenderness before your period should be addressed and not ignored. And the good part is that most of the issues surrounding breast tenderness can be addressed with nutrition. But before I dive into all those tips for you, go ahead, like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell to be notified every time I post a new video on menstrual cycle health, nutrition, and fitness. And if you don't know me yet, hi, I'm Omega, and the last PMS symptom that I resolved for myself was breast tenderness. And I will say that it was the hardest one for me to resolve, but I did it and I know you can too. So let's dive into those tips. Breast tenderness can be related to a lack in potassium, high estrogen, and potentially overall inflammation in your body. First, potassium. Sodium is potassium's counterpart. And with this premenstrual symptom, if we're not getting rid, AKA excreting enough, buildup can happen resulting in overall pain and overall water retention in our body too. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the sodium potassium balance is actually governed by the hormone aldosterone, which is released by the adrenal glands and aldosterone actually controls overall sodium potassium balance. And what they found in this article is that sodium potassium balance is sometimes thrown off by the hormone progesterone. The good part is that for me and many clients that I've worked with, this is an easy fix with the nutrient potassium. And the extra good part is, is that you don't need to go buy a potassium supplement. And here are a list of high potassium foods that I've used and that my clients have used to help reduce overall breast tenderness. Asparagus, cantaloupe, citrus, dates, prunes, cooked broccoli and spinach, and avocado. Which one of those high potassium foods are your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Now on to estrogen. High estrogen can also be the cause of breast tenderness. So I'll give you some basic ways you can reduce high estrogen, but if you wanna go more in depth with this, I recommend watching this video on how to reduce high estrogen. I'll link that in the comments below. The first way to make sure you excrete excess estrogen is getting enough fiber in your diet. Fiber will bring the excess estrogen from the liver to the colon where it's gone in your poo-poo. Another way to reduce excess estrogen is look around your environment. This is a short list of environmental estrogens that actually work to increase our overall estrogen. Phthalates found commonly in toys and prescriptions, bisphenols commonly found in hard plastic and toys, parabens found in most cosmetics and skincare, benzophene also found in cosmetics and skincare, and ethyl hexyl 4 methoxycinamate found commonly in sunscreens. That one was a mouthful. Another source of environmental estrogens that are actually commonly found in our food supply are pesticides. And pesticides are largely found on non-organic food. Now you might not be able to buy totally organic food, but when you can, do so. And if you can't, I highly recommend this supplement, which has been shown to get pesticides out of the liver. I will link to that below. Excess estrogen has also been linked to caffeine use. This 2015 study by Sisti et al. showed that there is a correlation between caffeine from coffee and estrogen metabolism in urine, showing us that when we consume caffeine, which I used to love, we actually have more estrogen buildup in our bodies. Now, if you wanna know how to reduce your caffeine intake, you can watch this video where I talk about how I did that for myself. And finally, breast tenderness can be linked to overall inflammation also. One way to help reduce overall inflammation using nutrition is to up our omega-3 intake, specifically in the luteal phase, that two-week window before you start your period. Obviously, fish oil supplements have omega-3s, but I wanted to give you actual nutrition that also has omega-3s. So my list that I go to in my luteal phase is salmon, mackerel, flax seeds, and chia seeds. And I'm a firm believer that the world would just be a better place if all women knew how to deal with premenstrual disturbances like breast pain, mood changes, and all that. So if you are a fitness coach like me, who also wants to help people reduce PMS, find hormone balance, and optimize their hormones, apply for the Menstrual Cycle Health and Fitness course. The application process is really simple. All you have to do is click the link in the description box below and book a call with me. On that call, I'll ask you a few more application questions to see if you're a fit for the Menstrual Cycle Health, Fitness, and Nutrition course. And I have to be honest with you, not everyone is. But if it sounds like you are, I'll tell you more about the program, how it all works, and then you and I can decide if working together is a fit 
for both of us. Remember, you can apply using the link in the description box below. Go ahead, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and watch this video next on how to reduce high estrogen. Thanks for watching. Bye.